Hi there, my name is Anne Louise Wells. I'm the owner of Larkin Tweed Creative, and today I'm going to show you how to add colors and set up fonts in Kajabi. Now, this is potentially mostly related to the themes that I create, but it could really apply to any theme that you decide to create within Kajabi. Um, but let's say you purchased a theme from me. So you would, um, you would potentially receive a sheet of instructions with links to Canva because all of the images that I create are prepared in Canva to make it easy for you and to allow you to um, be able to customize and adjust images however you want and having them sized properly to still fit the theme. So uh, Canva is so user friendly and uh, so easy to make adjustments and to customize for anybody. So that's why I chose to do it this way. Um, but if you do purchase it through me, when you get your instructions, you'll have a link that will bring you to Canva and the first page on every link has your colors. Like these are color codes for the colors that go within this theme. Now, if you wanted to change the colors in Canva before you bring it into Kajabi, um, you could definitely do that so that you could kind of like see how it would look. So to customize the colors in Canva, you would go, let's say we select this one, you click on here, and then this box appears to see, to find this code, click on the plus, and that code will appear here. Now, if you're looking to create a completely different color, um, I don't know if you're trying to add some teal maybe, and then you would go here, and then you would copy and paste that code this way. And you would add it here, just so that you have it as a reference as you start you know, building your website. But if you wanted to now add these colors to Kajabi, Let's dive right in. So I'm going into Kajabi and now I have Arwin. So if that is the website that you've purchased or not, but this is one of the websites I've created. Um, to change the colors, the first thing you wanna do though is kind of go into your settings. And here are all of your colors. So what you would do is you would click on a color and see, you've got that same code here. So you would go and copy and paste the code into here. So the way that I copy and paste is I do, I have a Mac computer, so I would do Command C to copy and Command V to paste. Whereas with a PC computer, it would be Control C to copy and Control V to paste. So once you, I've already got these colors in there, but this is how you would do it. And then you would have it within the theme. So once you've got it there, then you would go back to your website. And now I'm going to show you how to do the fonts. So we have to go into the page customizer. Perfect. So now that you're in the editor to um, switch out the fonts and the colors, you will go to, so I'm at the home page. It doesn't matter what page you're on. Like you can see down here, this little menu here, this has all of your different pages. Now to make, to change the settings of your website, um, and that means like the fonts, the colors, those changes that you make, they happen across the board. So in this case, it doesn't really matter what page you're on. Um, there's gonna be a tab that says settings. So whichever page you decide to do this on, it's gonna end up applying it to the entire website. So if you go into settings, um, you've got your favicon. Now, what is a favicon? So if I, let's say I push this page uh, to preview. Now, here's the website. See this little icon here that appears on the tab? That is your favicon. So you wanna make sure that you choose something that really represents your brand or your business. It can be your logo, as long as there's not writing in your logo, like you wanna choose something that's maybe just like a symbol that's included in your logo um, and preferably as a transparent PNG, which if you don't know how to do, um, there will be a video on 
from my YouTube channel that explains how to create transparent PNGs in Canva. Okay, so now you're going to go to the style guide. Um, and you're going to start selecting all of your colors. Now, the reason why we went and set up the colors first is because you want that to be done and set up before you get into the page editor. Because once we start changing the colors, look what happens. I click on this. All of the colors that we saw in the original settings, they're all here. So if I haven't done it previously, at this point, I'd have to go back and go set them up. <laughs> so make sure you set them up, you save, and then you come to the editor and now set up your settings. Now, background page color, that is the color that appears back here. So unless you want your page to be a specific color throughout the website, um, you're gonna want to set it to white. Of course, if you want an area to be a different background color, you can click on that section and actually pinpoint a color specifically for that section. So it's not the end of the world if you pick something that you don't like across the board, but typically for this, I choose a very neutral color or a very like a white or a cream or something like that that's very light, like the lightest color of the site. That's why you have five color options for your theme. Primary color, I'm choosing black. I mean, the primary color is, um, it's really to do with the text. So how you want your text to appear as a primary color, but you can always customize it. So this also matters less, but I did choose the darkest color of the palette. Now your buttons, this is a big thing because across the board, whatever you choose here, you can also customize the buttons individually if that color doesn't work in certain sections. But to save you some time, it's nice to just have it like a certain color. And I wanted overall the buttons to really be gold for this theme. So I picked gold for the button and then the text color, that's the, the color that appears of the text here, I made it white. Uh, auto means, a normal size like if I click on full it will make it like full width so you have to press save to see it and um, solid is where it's filled versus you can have it with just an outline and the button small medium or large now the purpose of this is if the reason why you would have a large button is if you want a really big call to action which is really good to use on sales like long form sales pages or the events page or something like that where you want you want it to really stand out. Now here are the fonts. So you pick a font for your body. So the body font is like the smallest font, is the font for the content here. So you want something that's really easy to read, that's not too um, stylized, whereas the, the, and then the body font weight, so you can choose bold or normal. Um, but the heading font is maybe where you would choose a font that's more stylized, that would um, create you know, your main headlines that kind of really choose something that shows your personality or show or goes well with your brand, you know, and most people have this already selected at this stage. So this is where you would set it up. Um, and you can pick your colors again, in most sections, you can go and customize these. So if you're customizing them, as you go like specifically in each sections that's totally fine but you can set them up kind of the same way as the button where like as a standard you want the main head the heading font so heading font is any of these headings you want it to be this color the body font it's a little different i would say you want the body font to typically be a darker color um and the great thing about Kajabi is if the background is dark, it'll set it to a light color. So you don't have to worry too much about that. But I would set this to a dark color, especially if you've made that top color, your page background color, a light color, then I would choose darkest color. You just want everything to be super legible. Secondary body font color is, I, I kept it the same, but again, because you can customize these things personally. The placeholder font is for, like there is a form right here at the bottom. See the words that are holding here? So this is a placeholder. Um, I picked pink to have it stand out, but still not be as brilliant as the line that holds the words. So um, also, if you were wondering what body line height or heading line height is, the line height, this is like a, developers language or web designer language 
Um, this just means the spacing height between the text. So let's say here, see how the spacing height is between the words? Um, so you don't really need to change this unless you go and switch the fonts and it, all of a sudden it looks really tight. Then you'll want to come back here and maybe adjust this, but you can keep it as is. Same with these font sizes. Um, now, important to know what H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, like what does that mean? Again, this is a developer's language or web designer language. Um, it's the heading sizes and it's also linked to SEO. So H1, H2, it stands for header, it stands for header one or header two. Header one, every page will only have one header one and it's the very top header that you have here on your hero image and it will be the biggest size that you will use because you have a bigger space you're making a statement like this this part is really important and your h1 for seo is what will help you be indexed on google or even on pinterest so you want to make sure that that h1 is very um tells a lot about who you are and what you do mostly what you do um, and if it's, if it's important that the location of where you are, um, like if that's important to your business to be recognized, or if you do online work, it matters less. But if let's say you're offering services and you're not doing them online, you're doing them in person, then you're going to want to include maybe a geo location within that H1. Anyways, I digress, but these are all important things to know. So the H1 has like the top hierarchy and your H2 has second hierarchy. So that's like your headings here for your, um, your other paragraphs. Everything else like H3, H4, H5, H6, you're just playing with different sizes of fonts. So they don't matter as much, um, but I would say your H1 and H2, the content you have within those headers really matters. Um, and then mobile, I've set them up to be slightly smaller, which is really, that's that's important because you don't want everything to be overly large when you're looking on mobile. And also you don't wanna go any smaller than 14. PX stands for pixels. Like you don't wanna go any smaller than 14 pixels uh, on mobile or desktop. Uh, 16 is usually a really good number for desktop because it's not overwhelmingly large as you can see. And it's not too small either, but for mobile, it's uh, it looks even better at 14 pixels, but I wouldn't go any smaller than that. And then you're going to want to set up the colors for your error message uh, or error me message background, which you won't really be able to test unless, you know, once your site is gone live and an error message pops up, then you'll be able to see how it looks. And if you don't like how it looks, just remember, this is where you got to come back to edit it. So it's in your... So you want to make sure that you save everything before you move on. So if I'm going to click save here and then, right. So when I go back here, that's in your style guide. So those are the two important ones that you're going to want to edit. And that's how you edit your fonts across the board.